This is a special edition of WeatherScope, comprehensive severe weather coverage from the Weather Channel. Good afternoon from the Weather Channel Forecast Center. We continue to follow Tropical Storm Josephine this afternoon as it moves fairly quickly into the northeastern corner of the Gulf of Mexico. Alongside the Weather Channel's tropical specialist, John Hope. And John, interesting system yesterday, not showing a lot of movement, a little bit erratic in its development, but now at least it appears things seem to be converging together to give us a little bit more certainty now as to where it's headed, how fast it's going. Once it decided to move, it really took off that club. Now it's moving, as you know, over 20 miles an hour. It also did a lot of getting better organized overnight. In fact, early this morning, there was about a 10 millibar drop in the lowest pressure, but fortunately, after that, it's kind of steadied off now. And it looks as if it's going to come in either as a strong tropical storm or just barely a hurricane. And here we're only talking about a difference, say, between 75 miles an hour, perhaps, and, and, and 70. All right, well, let's go ahead and show the folks uh, back home some of the coordinates here. These are the latest coordinates for you as of 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Again, 28.3 north, 85.9 west, that put it roughly 110 miles south, southwest of Apalachicola, Florida. Sustained winds at 70 miles per hour, so at least from a wind perspective, not too far away from being a minimal hurricane. And the movement off to the northeast at 23 miles per hour with a pressure of about 983 millibars. John, let's go ahead and put the visible satellite view up, and uh, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about some of these clusters and the thunderstorm development. Well, you can kind of see where the center is, Declan. I think you can uh, outline that for us, just about where it is. And then, as you see, there's some very bright white clouds off to the southeast of that, and those are all headed toward Florida, so some very heavy rains uh, coming into Florida, even a long way to the south of where we expect the center to come ashore. That's right, and one of the things we've noticed is uh, some fairly intense convection out over the Gulf of Mexico, and I guess you have to remember that when we're looking at this area where we have a lot of the convection occurring or has been occurring, we do actually have some pretty warm water temperatures, isn't that right? They are warm enough, certainly, to support uh, full hurricane strength, so if it's uh it doesn't get to be a hurricane, it will not be because the water is too cool. And one of the big uh, concerns, of course, uh, in addition is to the threat of tornadoes, and we'll show you some radars in just a moment. But first, we'll quickly go over some of the watches and warnings that are in effect. And uh, John, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about the hurricane warning? Well, the main warning, uh, uh, of course, uh, hurricane warnings from Apalachicola down to Anclo Keys. And what this means is that there's a possibility of getting hurricane conditions now. You say, well, how can that happen when we don't have a hurricane? Well, there's still some chance this could get to be a hurricane, but even if not, we're not talking about much difference. And of course, when we talk, put up these kind of warnings, we're not only talking about the winds, but we're talking about the storm surge and uh, all of that. And also the tropical storm wind, uh, tropical storm warnings do extend west from Apalachicola out to Fort Walton Beach. Also notice south of Anclo Key down to Venice. Uh, that is also a tropical storm warning. And John, interestingly enough, on the east side of the peninsula from Cape Canaveral all the way up to the Little River Inlet, a uh, tropical storm warning. We have that uh, strong high that's been pushing off the east coast. So actually there's a very large area where we've had some pretty strong wind gusts with the tropical system. And the hurricane or the tropical storm isn't going to do anything but sort of uh, make that even stronger because you're still going to have that high there. And what we have, Declan, uh, uh, the, what we call the pressure gradient, the difference in pressure between the center of the low and the high up there. And uh, when you have a strong pressure gradient, that's why the winds blow hard and they're going to be blowing onshore as this hurricane uh, starts up the coast. One of the big concerns, of course, as the landfall approaches or gets closer tonight is exactly where the, the center circulation will move on shore because, of course, at that time, right near that location, and, and in this case, to the south, maybe to the southeast, the big concern will be what kind of storm surge are we going to have and exactly where will it be the worst? We're going to have a rather substantial storm surge, Declan, uh, up to 9 or 10 feet, I believe, and it will be from where the center or the, or the eye crosses the coast to the southeast in this case. And Apalachee Bay, we should point out, is very vulnerable. First of all, because of the slope of the continental shelf, it's very shallow water there. And then the coast is concave there, and the water can literally funnel in. So it'll be from where the center crosses the coast down to the uh, south and east of that point. Okay, and the strike probability, as you can see, illustrated here on the map, uh, highest in that zone uh, heading along to the northeast of the actual center of circulation right now. Storm surge, as we mentioned, uh, six feet, perhaps as much as nine feet as we're heading into that northeastern corner of the Gulf of Mexico. And, of course, at the time of high tide, uh, that would be, a, John, a worst-case scenario, if I'm not mistaken, the coupling of the high tide's arrival and the storm surge. That's true, Declan. In this case, since it's where it is, it doesn't make quite as much difference because 
because there's not a big difference between the darn little uh, high tide and the darn little low tide up in the northeast Gulf, uh, uh, northeast Gulf, but it could make a difference of a foot or so. And lots of rain. John, one of the things that's happened this week in Florida is that we've seen a lot of uh, rain over the state, especially the northern part of the state. Uh, we have some scenes we can show you of some flooding that's taken place. Uh, parts of Florida already this week have picked up five to eight inches of rain. Uh, this is Clay County. Residents are wading through knee-deep water and cars are slowly making their way over flooded streets. Josephine's outer bands of heavy rain is going to add insult to injury to the already saturated soil and as I mentioned five to eight inches of rain have already occurred in parts of northeastern Florida in the last several days. Uh, John there's the radar in motion and you can see lots more to come as the center circulation is still a good distance off the coast and we have to get through a lot of this before things will actually start to dry out. That's what makes it especially bad Dick, when uh, much more heavy rain ex uh, is expected in the very area where you just showed the flooding. And, of course, the, the threat uh, for some of these tornadic-type thunderstorms. We've already had a report this morning of a possible tornado in Naples. In fact, about 12 blocks uh, experiencing some wind damage as a result of that possible tornado. Very unstable air over Florida, and you notice that that hurricane watch covers a bigger area than we normally see associated with a hurricane. It covers virtually the whole peninsula of Florida. And uh, what are your estimations as to after the landfall tonight and as the center of circulation moves farther and farther inland, uh, we'll still have to worry about the threat of tornadic we will, and uh, but what we probably won't have to worry about after that point is uh, hurricane force winds anymore, because whether it's a hurricane or not at landfall, once the center gets over land, then it's going to weaken some. So we're talking off the east coast of the U.S., the southeast coast of a, a tropical storm, not, not a hurricane, I think. Okay, thanks a lot, John. We'll continue to update you on the approach of tropical storm Josephine into the northeast corner of the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, we'll turn it over to the studio. Marshall Cease has a look at your forecast. Thanks, Eklund. Thanks, John Hope. Definitely a serious situation down around Apalachee Bay, Florida. Another thing to note, we have a tornado warning that was just issued in west central Florida. That's northern Hillsborough County and Pasco County. Seems like we've had a number of these this morning. A tornado and early this afternoon. A tornado was indicated by radar near Tampa Palms, Hunter's Green area. It's moving north-northeast at 45 miles an hour, and the tornado will be moving along the I-75 corridor in southern Pasco County by 315 this afternoon. So estimates anywhere from two to four inches of rain, definitely some flooding, especially in low-lying areas. Let's take a look at the radar and then we'll show you uh, the current map and then take you out into the forecast series for the next 36 hours and the next couple of days. You've seen a close-up view of that rain in the southeastern part of the country. Very heavy rain here, and that rain now has moved up into Norfolk, Virginia. They're reporting light rain. It's also raining around Charlotte, and we pick up heavier rain down in southern Georgia and in South Carolina, Anderson, South Carolina, indicating moderate rain at this hour, and very heavy rain around Appalachie Bay and down along the west coast of Florida into the Tampa area this morning. Okay, let's take a look at the current map now. Current map's gonna show a frontal zone slicing across the midsection of the country. Some rain associated with it in Kansas. Some cooler air behind it. But this is the weather maker for the next several days because as Josephine and then its remnants track to the northeast, right along the coast of the Carolinas and then into the northeast, the computer models that we're getting are indicating some very heavy amounts of rain that are gonna be attributable to Josephine. Now, one of the good things that's happening is Josephine is still moving very rapidly, uh, northeast at 23 miles per hour, so that's good. That'll cut the spigot off a little quicker than uh, might be the case if it was a slower mover. As it moves along the coast, tomorrow morning and tonight, there'll be some flooding type rains in North and South Carolina for sure. Myrtle Beach, northward, Little River Inlet, and all the way down through Savannah. Winds are being clocked right now off of Savannah. We're getting wind gusts to excess of 40 miles an hour. And this high pressure, the culprit over the last several days for that easterly flow in the Gulf of Mexico, not going to help situations either. It is definitely going to be windy and wind-blown driven rain all along the southeast coast right through tomorrow afternoon when the center of this storm system will be just off the tidewater and that's going to be bringing in some heavy amounts of rain in eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. In fact, there's already been some flood watches issued up in this part of the country uh, right now for what begins tonight. So the heaviest rain today is going to be here and then it'll move along the coast beginning tonight.
Thank you.